Now, for thousands of years, there was virtually no scientific progress. And then suddenly, something happened. There was literally an explosion in scientific development, and the curve is getting steeper all the time. But what caused this change? Well, obviously, the physical universe didn't change suddenly. But man woke up. He began to search out the laws of the physical universe. He accepted their restraint and their discipline. And for the first time in history, he was free. Free from bondage to ignorance and superstition and unworkable philosophies and theories. And the result? An explosive progress. But how about the moral and spiritual realm? In this realm, man seems to feel that there are no absolute values and no fixed laws, so once again, he is committed to trusting himself, his own ideas, his own theories and philosophies. And what's the result? Virtually no progress. There are the rushing waves, mountains of molecules, each stupidly minding its own business, trillions apart, yet forming white surf in unison, ages on ages, before any eyes could see, year after year, thunderously pounding the shore as now. For whom? For what? On a dead planet with no life to entertain? Never at rest, tortured by energy, wasted prodigiously by the sun. Deep in the sea, all molecules repeat the patterns of one another, till complex new ones are formed. They make others like themselves, and a new dance starts. Growing in size and complexity, living things, masses of atoms, DNA, protein, dancing a pattern ever more intricate. Out of the cradle, onto dry land, here it is, standing. Atoms with consciousness, matter with curiosity, stands at the sea, wonders at wondering. I, a universe of atoms, an atom in the universe. The advance of technological developments resulted in the ultimate in firepower. The atomic age will see the further development of airborne devices beyond the conception of man. The same atoms inside you, I, and every other thing that exists. Our poets do not write about it. Our artists do not portray this remarkable thing. Unsung by singers, you are reduced to hearing an evening lecture about it. But don't worry, I'm not here to lecture. Richard Feynman, everyone. Not only are you a Nobel Prize winning physicist, bongo drums player, artist, poet, professor, member of the Rogers Presidential Commission investigating the Challenger explosion, author, uh, among other things. How do you manage to keep yourself together? Well, there is this famous inventor fellow named Samuel L. Clemens, who is having trouble keeping it all together too. And then one day in 1871, he came up with an ingenious invention, these straps. You see, there are no tricks up my sleeve. Feynman is here today to talk about his latest work, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, a book that contains not a single equation, am I right? There are too many books with too many equations. I've written enough equations in my life to know better. I've learned my lesson. Richard. What is a scientist? Good morning. The unseasonably cold weather in Dixie is affecting even the launch of the space shuttle Challenger. However, NASA officials say they have determined that icicles on the launch pad do not present any real problem. The winner, the teacher who will be going into space, Krista McAuliffe. Or is that you? And here comes the flight crew now. Ron McNair, 
uh, pilot Mike Smith, followed by Krista Masala, feature in space. Take Sammy. What? Don't you want to keep me here with you? It's the long-awaited launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger. We will have live coverage in the next half hour if it goes up. They are counting. The ice is cleared away, and Challenger should be going away very soon. Coming up on the 90-second point in our countdown. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th base of the mission, and it has cleared the tower. Roger, roll, Challenger. Three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Velocity 2,257 feet per second. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles, downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. This morning, they looked as though they were not going to be able to get off. President Reagan has declared a week of mourning for the seven astronauts, five men and two women, who lost their lives on their way into space this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd planned to speak to you tonight to report on the State of the Union. But the events of earlier today have led me to change those plans. The families of the seven, we cannot bear, as you do, the full impact of this tragedy. Your loved ones were daring and brave, and they had that special grace that special spirit that says, give me a challenge, and I'll meet it with joy. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them, this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye, and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. Thank you. Yeah, I was asked to be on the commission investigating the shuttle a few days after the accident by Bill Graham. Funnily enough, he's a former student of mine at Caltech, and he's now the head of NASA. Hello? When I heard the investigation would be in Washington, my immediate reaction was no. Who? No. Now, I've avoided Washington my entire career, and I don't want to get mixed up in politics. You're ruining my life. Wasting my time. Goodbye. Who was that? That was Bill Graham. He says he's a former student of mine. He wants me to be a part of that commission investigating the Challenger explosion. And you told him that you'd do it, right? Oh, no. I've got to get to Tuva. Besides, I'm not getting mixed up in politics. I've learned my lesson. Besides, anyone can do it. Yes, but no one can do it quite like you. Look, I know you want to get to Tuva, but if you don't do it, there'll be 12 people all in a group going from place to place together. But if you join the commission, there will be 11 people all in a group going round from place to place together while the 12th one runs around all over the place, checking all kinds of unusual things. There's no one that can do that quite like you. And so, being very immodest, I believed her. Next time on The Challenger. Ladies and gentlemen, I now would like to call this first meeting of the Presidential Commission on the Space Shuttle Challenger accident to order. Was there any special extra heavy load or something on this particular flight higher than other flights? This is not how to find out how things really are. Everything's arranged. I'm worried we'll never really find out what happened to the shuttle. <laughs>